So if you look at other markets, financial services, travel, retail, these are all markets that have benefited from the advent and growth of automation. So if you look at financial services, the first stocks to be traded electronically were low cap stocks. They're the stocks that most people hadn't heard of. Uh, people knew where to go get the large cap stocks. So you didn't go buy Microsoft stock or Cisco stock through NASDAQ or through electronic trading uh, initially. Eventually, electronic trading automated that entire market and now all stocks are traded across electronic trading platforms. Same thing happened in travel. When Sabre Systems was initially created, it was created within American Airlines to sell their unsold airplane seats. Eventually, American Airlines spun out Sabre Systems into its own company, and they served all airlines, all hotels, and also all rental car agencies. And today, most travel reservations come across an electronic or automated trading platform, including great brands like Four Seasons or Ritz-Carlton. Uh, we saw the same thing happen with retail as well. So in the early days of eBay, the first things to be sold on eBay were things that would typically be sold in a flea market or a yard sale or a garage sale. And today, there's one car sold on eBay every single minute. So we've seen automation come into these markets and automate the entire stack of inventory. So if you look at what's happening in digital advertising today, over the past five years, we've been focused on automating a lot of the low end or the remnant type inventory. Uh, we've moved mid-market. And eventually, everything in this market will be traded through an automated trading platform. So this is why I started the company, the Rubicon Project, five years ago. Uh, 12 years ago, I started one of the first ad servers. I've watched this market grow and evolve over the course of the past 12 years. And if you look at any other major market where there are thousands or millions of buyers and sellers, and billions of dollars exchanging hands, there's always some type of automated platform and technology and standards that tie these markets together. So what excited me about the opportunity here was that I saw the same thing happening in digital advertising. It's become a global market, lots of innovation, uh, lots of new capabilities brought into the market, but the issue is that it's, become, it's still too difficult for advertisers to go spend money online. So until we address the first two problems, nothing else in this market matters. Uh, the number one problem is that it's still too complex and too expensive for an agency or an advertiser to go spend money with a publisher. And this is why. There's too many manual processes, uh, too many hops and steps in the middle. Uh, this is a market where it's still uh, managed primarily by relationships and telephones and fax machines. And it's a very, very fragmented market. The second problem, <laughs> without naming names, <laughs> is that there's increased competition. There are companies who have spent billions and billions of dollars to take an audience and make it accessible at scale. And if you look at the top publishers around the globe, they've spent a fraction of that in technology to make their audiences available at scale. So the reason this is a challenge is that if, if you take out the top five publishers, and if you look at where the inventory is coming from, so take out Facebook, take out Yahoo, take out the top five publishers that exist, and you go to number six or number seven or number eight, in any major market throughout the world, they have maybe one or two percent of the, the total available inventory or impressions, right? So if you're looking at this from an agency point of view, if you want to access an audience at scale, you have to put together a lot of these one or two percents to get to an audience that makes sense for them to, to reach. The interesting thing about this is if you look at this pie, most of the inventory is actually coming from the premium publishers. The challenge is, is in reaching them because it's very fragmented to, to access them. The solution to this is automated capabilities. Same thing that happened in travel, same thing that happened in financial services is what they did was they took all this fragmentation, they put it together through automated platforms and marketplaces, and they made that inventory available at scale, and they created safe environments for those transactions to occur. So we get so hung up in all the technology and the acronyms, and I think what's happening is, is what we're doing is we're creating so much rope that we're just hanging ourselves with it. So 
We need to focus less on the acronyms. It's not about RTB or SSPs or PMPs or WTFs or anything like that. What it really is, it's, it's all automation. This is what we're really talking about here. So the main problem that we need to focus on solving is, is how do we make this inventory more accessible? How do we make it so it's easier to go spend money online? Uh, just as easy, if not easier, than it is in digital, uh, I'm sorry, in, in broadcast or print or outdoor al advertising. So what we need to focus is on is how do we make all the inventory accessible through automation? Not just Remnant, but also the non-guaranteed inventory, as well as the premium guaranteed inventory. It can all benefit from automation. So we use the word programmatic a lot. Um, I'm not a fan of the word pro programmatic, primarily because I think it creates the, the emotion that what you're doing is you're just kind of kicking back and letting the computers do all the work for you. That's not the case. Automation doesn't mean that you don't do the work or that you don't have any control. Just like the GPS in your car. You don't install a GPS and say, hey, let, let me let the car drive itself. Right? We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't hop into a plane that's going to go fly itself. Right? It always needs a pilot, even though there's autopilot. Uh, and the car uh, needs a driver behind it. The GPS helps you get there more efficiently and more effectively. So the, the conversations that we're having today as an industry are very similar to the conversations that occurred when IBM put the first computer on someone's desk. Put a computer on the desk, people looked at it as though it was some kind of foreign object. Uh, they said, hey, this computer's going to get in the way. I have to learn something new. Uh, it's going to take over my job. Uh, it's going to slow me down because I have to go learn this, this new thing. I'm going to create more mistakes. Right? And what we actually found was that computers didn't replace people. No one got to kick back and just you know, put their legs up on the desk and watch the computer do the work for them. What we found was that computers need people. And people need computers. And what's happened is, is that we found that with every computer that got installed, it required a company to go hire a person to go operate it. That person became more efficient. Their businesses became more efficient. The markets that those, that those businesses existed in became more efficient and they grew. And those people became more valuable to their organizations. So this is not new. What we're just talking about is using computers to make things better, faster, and cheaper, just like we've seen in other markets before. So when we talk about RTB, we talk about RTB as though it's a new business or an industry or a market. It's not. RTB is just a protocol. In fact, it's the first protocol that this, this industry has all gotten together, the first standard. And it's just a common language for a buyer and a seller to be able to connect. It's no different than HTTP. We don't talk about HTTP when we refer to the internet. We talk about e-commerce. Uh, we talk about social networks. Uh, we talk about applications. HTTP is just a protocol that enables a consumer to be able to talk to a business through a web browser. When we talk about private marketplaces, all we've done is we've created a fancy word for saying that we're just taking the same selling rules that we put on our direct sales organization, and we're enabling computers to enforce those rules. The nice thing about this, though, is that computers can, can enable much more complicated rules, and you have more fine-tuned controls over this. But it's just a, a new fancy term that we've created for a very simple process. So the world that we're in is, is not a new world, but it is a much more powerful world. We're, we're in a world where we're able to use computers and automation to do things smarter, faster, leverage data, uh, tie markets together. So as an example here at the, at the Rubicon project, we've invested a ton of money and time into building a computing infrastructure that's enabled, uh, that enables companies to better transact, the buyer and the seller, and do so you know, leveraging data, using algorithms, uh, using computers to make smarter decisions. So this is a world that does require a lot of computing power. So we've put 16,000 CPUs online. And every single second, there's 45 gigabits of data that are passing through our systems. These are transactions between the buyer and the seller. All this data becomes far more valuable. So the way that, that we need to think about this is that if you took every single publisher in the infrastructure that they've developed to run their websites, and then you took every single DSP and ad network and trading desk and ad exchange and all the infrastructure that they've put together to run their systems, and if you put all that together in one data center, 
we've had to develop a computing platform that has the same processing power as all those things combined because every time there's a web page delivered from a publisher, there's one or multiple ads that shows up on that page. And then we have to take that and send out bid requests to uh, every single one of the, the DSPs or the ad networks or exchanges who are bidding. So it's very, very complicated infrastructure and it's a lot different than financial services or travel primarily because we're operating in an industry where the inventory is perishable. It's not like a stock or a hotel room that could sit on the market for a day, a week, a month, or even a year. You have 30 milliseconds to clear that transaction. Right? So we're operating in a very complex real-time environment as an industry, and we need to bring everybody closer together in order to make these transactions more efficient. Data, there's tons and tons of talk about data, right? Big data, our systems are processing over three petabytes of data, pricing data, over 650 million users across the US. We've solved the problem of taking a massive amount of audience and inventory and making it accessible at scale. What we need to do is we need to bring the buyer and seller together uh, to be able to leverage that data and leverage uh, that audience in one place. And the last piece here is you know, talking about computers. Computers can make decisions faster and leverage data in, in a way that humans just simply cannot. So for every single ad that comes into our trading platform, there are over 197,000 decisions that need to be made. Who's the user? What type of site is it? Uh, where do they sit in the session queue? Uh, what time of day is it? All the different environment variables. It takes all this stuff together to figure out what is the optimal trade between the buyer and the seller. Right? These are, this is a, a computational analysis that a human simply cannot do in less than 30 milliseconds. And this is happening over one million times every single second. So in the time that it takes you to blink an eye, our systems are processing over 300,000 trades. So I'm not saying this to brag about our platform. I'm saying this because we're in the middle of this revolution as an industry. And this is a perfect example of how we're able to use computers to make decisions much more intelligently and faster. And it's scales that, that humans just simply cannot operate in. It would take about 30, if you took 30,000 people and stuck them in a room, you can get them to make one million uh, decisions or transactions uh, in a second. Right? It'd probably take them the entire day to make those decisions. So where do we need to go next? The technology exists, the inventory exists, the buyers exist. Uh, what we need to do is we need to take the technology out of the middle. And what we need to do is we need to put the technology underneath. We have to, to get the buyer and the seller together uh, push them together to do these deals and use technology as an enabler. It's not about automation or programmatic or anything like that sitting in the middle making decisions for you. You need to make the decisions. You need to figure out the types of deals that you want to do. And we need to use the technology to make these, the execution of, of those deals uh, much more effective. There are two things standing in the way for us today uh, in, in making this happen. Uh, number one is a very technical, technical and tactical issue, which is deal ID. We just need one simple identifier that's passed from the advertiser through the agency, through the trading desk, through the DSP, to the SSP, to the ad server, that ties the buyer and the seller together so they know that they're looking at the same deal. It's very simple. It's all we need to do is get this one technical thing in there, and, and we can enable these transactions and push the buyer and the seller together. And the second is attitude and communication. We just have to want to do it. The publisher and the, the agency and the advertiser need to get together and have the conversations. Don't rely on the technology in the middle to make these decisions for you. Don't let the technology get in the way. And don't get confused by all these acronyms. It's really about you know, doing deals and letting technology make those deals more effective. So in summary, um, this automation thing is happening. Uh, we've seen it before. It's happened in other markets. Same thing's happening in this market today. What we need to do is we need to get the buyer and the seller together get technology out of the middle, put it underneath, let's not focus on all this acronym confusion. And if we do this, not only will the digital marketing and advertising market grow, and will we move and shift dollars from broadcast and print and outdoor to online, but the top premium publisher segment of the market will not only sustain and maintain itself, but it also has the potential to grow and be far more competitive than the, the large giants that are trying to come into this space and provide those technology solutions to you know, not only benefit themselves, but to try to bring some of these dollars online 
uh, to you know, really enable their own businesses to grow, not necessarily the, the overall publisher market or the top premium publisher market. So I think there's great opportunity here. Um, one thing that I want to leave you with is I would like you to imagine what the travel industry would look like if it wasn't for automated trading. Imagine if you needed to go book a trip. And first you had to pick up the phone and book a, a, an airline or a flight. You'd call up your British Airways, find out what flight times they had available. They might not have any seats available. You hang up the phone, you call Virgin, uh, find out what they have available. Maybe you don't like the price. You hang up the phone, uh, you call American Airlines, and you finally find the, the, the flight at the right time and the right price that you want. Hang up the phone then, you call a hotel, go through the same process, then you have to go book a rental car place. You, know, you call four or five of these, and you know, four or five hours later, you've booked your trip. Now you have to go send in a check, mail it to them. They're going to send you back a ticket. You get all this stuff. You put it together in a little folder. You go to the airport. You take this out. And when you get to the airport, someone pulls out a spreadsheet, looks for your name, and checks off your name from the list. Right? Imagine that world. We can't because it doesn't exist anymore. But it did. So fast forward five years or 10 years from now, I think we're going to be looking at this market using that same analogy and looking back on it and saying, that's absolutely crazy that this market that has existed for thousands of years <laughs> is now operating in this way. A lot of people don't know this, but the first advertisement, paid advertisement, was actually a painted rock in 4000 BC. <laughs> so we're looking at 6,000 years that this industry has been operating in a very manual way. And really, over the, the last five and the next five, is where we're bringing this automation and real technological capability to it. So it's a very exciting time for this market. So again, we've seen this story before. We're not that brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs>